Hey guys, I figured it was about time I answered some of your tattoo related questions by just showing you all of them. My tattoos have empowered me to follow my dreams, travel the world, make friends and art and be myself simply by how comfortable I feel in my own skin. If tattoos aren't for you, that's absolutely fine and everyone has their own path to happiness. So without further ado, here they all are in the order I got them. The first tattoos I got were my Peter Rabbit and Jemima Puddle Duck thigh pieces. James McKenna did these for me when he was an apprentice. I drew them myself. The gold frame resembles mirrors that hung in our family home and at the bottom of each side is my sister and my mum's name. I love how they sit the same on my thighs. I find them really flattering and I love them. I then swindled James into tattooing more of my drawings on me so I got the wolf from Little Red Riding Hood and Mr Todd the Fox on my feet. Satisfied with the need to draw up my own tattoos, I let James take the reins <laughs> with this rocking horse that represents a toy I got from my grandparents. I remember this one being particularly painful. Speaking of painful, this moth was a real mission, but it will always be one of my favourites. I hadn't planned on getting any visible tattoos, but whoops, I started my half sleeve with this beautiful piece by James again. I really got a flavour for traditional tattoos at this point in my life. The outside of my half sleeve is the start of all my medieval themed tattoos. I love how dark it is, I love how it rolls around my shoulder, and yeah. So once again, all those tattoos from 18 to 22 years old were by James McKenna. So I met Emma D in Fremantle when she started her apprenticeship and I just had to get tattooed by her, starting with this crow and skull. I have my portrait of Fiasco, my dog, who is the light of my life. I will always want her by my side. This is her just being beautiful, dancing around with a parasol and some poppies. Another thing about me is I will always believe in unicorns and anything magical, but I don't believe all of them are pretty and pastel. There are some dark ones out there that are fueled by molten lava and lightning. Thanks Pete for doing this one for me at the Perth Tattoo Convention a million years ago. At this point all my tattoos had ended up on the right hand side of my body so I balanced myself out with a sleeve from Emma D on my left arm, which was originally a half sleeve but we extended it not long after its completion. Again, more medieval stuff. I will always love reading, writing and learning about this period and time and the themes. Anything magic related is right up my alley. I love all the details, especially in the top part here and how it curls over my shoulder. I also have these little guys behind my ears that no one really sees because I refuse to tie my hair up ever. And Emma did these as well. After them I got some leg tattoos, this one by Tyler Wake when he was an apprentice. He posted a bunch of paintings on Facebook and Instagram of these snake and daggers and I just had to have one. I remember walking through a tattoo convention in Dallas, Texas and I saw little baby Linda working and I'd been following her on Instagram for a couple of years and I had the biggest fangirl moment and I booked in and got this tattoo the next day. This is my second last tattoo that I have. Pete did this for me and I love it. He absolutely nailed it. I would totally get more tattoos on my back, but they make me cry, so I guess not. <laughs> then last, but certainly not least, I have this super emo tattoo from Lauren. I got it last year where I was feeling a little bit hopeless and lonely. I guess things have changed now so I need to go and get a new one. I feel like that's why tattoos can be really important. They do bookmark times in your life that matter and remind you of where you've come from. So thank you so much for watching my video. Let me know if you have any more questions and I can make a second video. Bye!